All right, episode seven, driving with Pastor Jay. Uh, we're going to continue looking through a little bit of a study that we were doing out of First Peter uh, that we're doing on Wednesday nights. And this is Thursday morning, so last night we uh, we were in this study and we were looking at verses 17 through 21. But I'm just going to focus in on verse 17 today. Uh, and then maybe do a part part B with the remainder of that passage. But um, Peter's talking there. He says, since you call upon a father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. Now, Peter's just told the church there that they're to live holy lives because their father in heaven is, is holy. So we think about that, you know, put some flesh on that. How how difficult is it for us to live holy lives? And if we set the context for that passage, Peter is speaking to a church that is being persecuted. They're scattered abroad. They've lost their jobs. Some of them lost their homes. They've lost family. Um, they're just kind of at the end of it. They really don't know what's going on especially with all the problems going on around. So, uh, bring this forward a little bit. As a Christian, uh, if your family is suffering, you don't have any food, and you're walking past that grocery stand, are you going to maybe give up your morals a little bit so that you could maybe take some food items so that your kids could eat? Quite possibly. If you're that college kid who's trying to live a holy life, you've received the scholarship from your church to, to extend your education, and yet you find yourself in a difficult situation with some classes and your GPA is dropping, and now you got to go home and, and tell that church that, that, um, that you, you're, you're failing, is it tempting to maybe Write some notes on the back of your hand or, you know, cheat a little bit so that you can get some good grades and keep that GPA up? Absolutely. And so Peter's trying to remind this church and the church today that we're called to be holy, that we're to live pious lives, that we can't just go out and do whatever we want to do, that there is a standard that we're to try to keep. And so why, how, how do we do that? Why do we do that? Well trying to remind us to look to the cross, to look to Jesus as our example. Peter's talked about that, I mean, to be obedient and, and not live our lives in ignorance as we once were. And so we look to Jesus and we've got the example in Matthew chapter 4 of how Jesus faced temptation that he, you know, when, when Satan took him out in the desert, took him up on the, the mountaintop, up on the temple, and twisted scripture a little bit. What Jesus did was he used the word of God. He, he took scripture and then he presented it back to Satan. Well, we find the exact same thing at the end of his life when he's on the cross. What does Jesus do? He quotes scripture. He says, Father, into to my hands I commit my your my spirit. And that's out of Psalm 31. He tells, he tells them, you know, uh, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? And that's out of Psalm 22. And so there's scripture that he quotes. And that's just what we do, beloved. We take the scripture and we, we quote the word. That's how we live holy. And we do that. You know, Peter mentions here that we have a God who judges impartially. That God is, God is fair. God is just. Uh, when David was confronted with uh, many of his sins, and you know, he took the census there, and he was rebuked by one of the the prophets that came to him God sent a prophet to him and he gave him a choice of two or three things that would happen and David said well I'm gonna I'm gonna fall by I'm gonna, I'm gonna let God decide because I know God is just and there was about 2,000 men that were that died out of that and so there was a, a judgment that came and so we understand that that when we are disobedient that judgment comes we have a God who is impartial and a God that that judges and so we're to live in reverent fear now there's two aspects of judgment there is a 
present judgment that God can execute. And we see passages throughout Scripture that remind us of that. Uh, Paul talks about that into in the Corinthian church. When we think about that Corinthian church, there were some things going on there, and they had some folks, false teachers that had came in and said, you know, the body and the, and the soul are two, two separate things, and you need to kind of devoid yourself of those. And so Paul's writing to that church because they were doing some things that weren't quite right, and, and one of those things was they were, they were forsaking the Lord's Supper. And he comes and he tells them uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he writes to that church and says, Hey, some of you are, are getting sick. Some of you are weak. Some of you are even dying. You're falling asleep. Um, and that is because you're forsaking the Lord's Supper. You're not partaking of that right. And what was going on, they, they had love feast in their time and uh, before they became believers in their pagan life. And that was mixed with idolatry. And, and so they were partaking of the Lord's Supper. And then they were going out and doing things contrary to what God teaches in His command. And so Paul says, you're, there's judgment that's coming upon you. It's a, there's a present aspect of judgment that is happening. And the same thing happens today, beloved. We have the passage out of Acts chapter 5 where we have Ananias and Sapphira, who I very much believe were part of that early church. And here's two believers. They promised to give the tithe of the sale of a piece of property to the church and yet they lied and what happened there was that they both died instantly you know Ananias came in uh, and he lied to Peter and so he died and they carried his body out and his wife came in Sapphira, and told the exact same lie and what happened then that passage tells us that the whole church was seized with a reverent fear and because of that judgment that came upon those folks the church realized God is very zealous God is God is serious about sin so there's a present reality to judgment that comes and we can lose our blessing we can lose reward uh, we can lose our testimony as believers when we're not following what God's standard is. There's also a future judgment. There's an, there's an aspect of that that's futuristic. And Jesus tells us to lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust will not steal. And so there's a there's a future aspect to our to, to God's judgment that we can, you know, by disobeying God right now, we not only lose stuff here and now, losing our testimony, losing our blessing. Uh, having God not hear, David mentions that uh, if, if he disobeys God in, in one of the Psalms, uh, and I can't get it right now, I got it in my notes, but I don't want to try it because I, I am driving today, that, that God may not hear his prayer. So there's this present aspect, there's also a future aspect where we can lose that, that gift. And yeah, we, we'll still get into heaven, we, we don't lose our salvation as believers, but we can lose, you know, blessing. We can use our, our influence, lose that reward that we, we might receive when we get there. Uh, out of Revelation, we read, you know, how those folks, there's some folks that are there, and they got there by the word of their testimony, by the way they lived, and by salvation through Jesus Christ. So what we do here matters. We're to live in reverent fear. And here's the other aspect that Paul, Peter says that you're sojourners, you're pilgrims, you're just passing through right now. And so we're to live our lives as strangers. The example that we have from scripture there, and I just want to try to take a brief moment to kind of wrap all of this up together, is Abraham. Um, the passage out of Hebrews that talks about Abraham living as a sojourner here when he came into the promised land. Uh, he didn't he didn't settle his roots down. The only piece of property that Abraham owned in all the promised land that God brought him to was the plot of land where his wife was buried. And later, other family members were buried. 
other than that, he was he was just passing through. When the grass ran out, he packed up his flocks and his family, and they moved. So did uh, his son Isaac, and so did Jacob. They they were nomads. They sojourned all through the Promised Land. They they hung out here, but in the in the Promised Land, but they're constantly moving and going to different places. On the other hand, his nephew Lot. What happened to Lot? You think about Lot. Lot made his home in Sodom. His heart was glued to Sodom. And thus, it affected his whole family. When they had to leave that place, the angels came to take him out because he was a righteous man. His wife looked back and was turned to a pillar of salt. His daughters slept, you know, got him drunk and slept with him. Because Sodom became part of it. We're told not to not to love the things of the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We're we're sojourning, we're passing through. And so here's the thing, folks, as as believers, we're to live in such a way that glorifies God talk with folks before I've uh, read posts and stuff on Facebook we've had some dealings with issues that came up in local paper and in news cycles where folks think it's okay to sin you know God's gonna forgive me anyway and God might forgive you if you're a true believer but you're gonna lose your blessing you're lose your testimony we're to live in such a way that we we're ambassadors of, of Christ Jesus. We're to model that here on the earth. Now, we're not going to be perfect. I'm not claiming that, that that's the case, that we're to be perfect in every single way. But we're to live in such a way that, that it sends out His light and live. we're living differently than the rest of the world. It's magnified. It magnifies and glorifies Him in the way that we live. And again, we're not perfect, but we're different and that's what we're called to be we're called to be different and Peter is telling us we're, we're to look to the cross we're to look to Jesus Christ we're to look to the sal- this great salvation that we have and because of that that should show we should sh- shine like the stars around us and so just live differently just a l- little encouragement for the day um, we'll uh, we'll come back with uh, part two after this and try to finish up the rest of that chapter. This is Drive with Pastor Che, episode seven. Uh, I'll see you a little bit later.